Today we're going to talk about matter and energy. Matter in particular is very interesting to me because it's something that so far in all of our scientific fields, we still haven't quite pinned down. When something is created at a level of simplicity and geometry, it forms a vessel, a container to store the internal ingredients that it's actively creating and building inside. The best way I can describe this is by examining the fundamental behavior of a single celled human. This single cell at that point is a single organ. Can you guess which organ it is? Skin. Skin acts as a boundary layer between the internal and the external world and was created from the genetic ingredients from the yin and the yang. When that transformation takes place, the two becoming one, something new is created. Well, obviously that's the case, but think about this. It's not just a mix of these two things. It's something new entirely, the singularity. Singularities are consciousness. They're that space of both void and awareness between all of the states of matter and all of the states of energy all at once. The singularity is like the equal sign in E equals MC squared. Singularities and boundary layers go hand in hand with each other. Consider that as energy goes into the toroidal field from the outside, going through that singularity takes it to the inside as if going through the boundary layer. Likewise, it goes through the singularity when it leaves, back into a different space once again. It's almost as if there's a world of energy and a world of matter, both intimately connected to each other through fundamental principles like as above, so below, which operate like a parallel universe. The fun part is that we have access to engage with both of them simultaneously. Now, what are these two worlds? I don't think I have to describe the world of matter to you. It's the physical world, the material world. Now, the world of energy, on the other hand, really, you could call it anything. The unified field, the astral realm, the source field, the energetic properties of matter, and even the place where your own imagination can thrive. These planes are intimately connected with each other, and through the awareness of both is where meaning is found, in the relationships between one and the other. So if singularities are in the middle of both of these places, how exactly do they work? Singularities are everywhere. Every atom has a singularity, regardless of if the atom is acting as a part of a person or that couch that we talked about previously. Perhaps there are different forms and functions that singularities have, which produce different results. Thrive recently did a video about this, which puts it all into perspective. They described the toroidal field and the way that they couple together with each other. When the field spins one way, it has a different effect than when it spins in the opposite direction. Then when they come together, they create a new field in the center, which is both of the previous two and neither all at the same time. This is the same geometry of the child's conception two coming together to create something new entirely. Toroidal fields must be able to come together at any angle, which you can see by just looking at the flower of life. For example, in coming together side by side to create the Vesica Pisces, they create a new singularity in the middle, a blending of matter and energy between the two. If this is the creation of a new singularity, what that would mean is a new wormhole, so to speak, for matter to translate into energy and for energy to translate into matter. If matter cannot be created nor destroyed, then it must be able to transition back and forth between different states of matter with different densities and even into different states of energy. Now, in relationship to all matter and all energy, light appears to be something fundamental to reality. There are things with singularities that create and give light as its primary function, such as a star. There are also things that receive light as their primary function, like a black hole. Finally, there are things that do both simultaneously, like a galaxy, they're erupting with light as well as absorbing it. Now science has yet to confirm this, but I believe that at the edge of the singularity, one of the first things that is coming into existence both in the material and in the energetic world is light, or rather the fundamental geometry that we perceive to be light in this dimension. The spectrum that light is on is much more vast than the visible spectrum. When light gets to the top of the visible spectrum, it must change. And so it goes through the singularity and changes geometry. Similar to what happens when the light from a flame gets to the top of that flame wave. It moves out of visible perception and becomes something else. This idea also applies to your eyeballs. At what point does light going into your eye translate into the physical receptors in your brain? For that matter, where's the transition between those electrical charges in your brain and your vast array of thoughts inside your mental world? In order to answer that question, we have to take a look at ourselves. 
We are at the center of both of these worlds and planes. With our physical bodies, we can interact with the physical world. And through our thoughts and emotions, we interact with the world of energy. Engagement with the internal and the external happen simultaneously. When you see something external, you feel or think about it internally. They mirror each other. Likewise, when you feel something, that feeling happens on both an energetic level and in your physical body. A hormone is released and waves of that emotion radiate out and affect those all around you. The hormone is the physical representation of the energetic feeling. And the feeling is the energetic representation of what that hormone is. Both of them always happen simultaneously in relationship to something else affecting you. It is literally a four elements constantly playing out. The physical and the energy of what's internal and the physical and the energy of what's external. So at that moment of conception, the tiny singularities of each the seed and the egg together create a new singularity completely. One that has dominion over the ingredients that were provided and one that is under the dominion of those who conceived it in the first place. People often ask me, when does the soul come into the body? Now, I'm not claiming to have the answer to that question, but I believe that the soul is there from the original point of union, just as the singularity is. As the embryo grows and continues to evolve and develop organs and body parts, more and more of that new consciousness is able to grow and thrive as well. So the single cell is essentially an empty embryo because its awareness of the ingredients internally and externally is limited and very small. But as it develops a heart and a brain and a pineal gland, suddenly it becomes more and more of a developed human consciousness. For example, the moment the pineal gland comes into manifestation is certainly important in that human's early life, but wouldn't there still be basic consciousness before that? That's how it makes sense to me anyways. And let's always be open to exploring new ideas and possibilities and really testing them to see if they're true. Okay, I wanna put all this stuff together and share with you a really profound realization that I've had. The first form created at conception was not the heart, but skin, a boundary layer between the inside and the outside. Geometrically, this is a physical demonstration of the squaring of the circle and the circling of the square. As the embryo grows, it goes into phi and out of phi. You might remember before how we looked at the stages of an embryo's growth. First one sphere, then soon it creates eight spheres, the basis of the Merkava and the cube. Then it forms a toroidal-filled blob with an organ in the center. And soon after, more and more organs and structures come into manifestation. This is life's attempt at creating a phi ratio between the matter and the energy of the body of consciousness that it's developing inside the womb. And it's a process that doesn't stop. You don't stop growing emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually until you die. And even when you die, well, what is death but a transition into something new? What that means is that you and I are not the inside nor the outside of our physical vessels, but the awareness between both of them and the creator of so much more.